Uh, next we'll move on to repairing a small defect in a rotor face. Here you can see this minor defect where it's crushed just a little bit of the face there. First thing you'll need a razor knife. You want to cut out a square large enough to cover that piece. Just try to cut as good of a square line as you can in that direction. And then use the flutes as a guide in this direction. And then a pair of uh, needle nose pliers to dig out the damaged area. If you can see about how deep we're going, depending on the size of the patch, you want to make the depth corresponding to that. And we want to clean the edges of the holes out and get a nice square here. Okay. You can use a piece of masking tape just as a template and marker and just draw out. Yeah, the square beneath, just trace it out. Now we just want to indicate which direction the flutes are going so that we align it properly to our piece of patch material. Use any, any little scrap. And we'll just lay it on there corresponding directly to the flutes so that everything is aligned properly. Trim that out. We want to cut the patch just a little bit outside of the lines to allow for the tension that we want. Okay. Then we can cut the depth down in half because of the depth that we've got that patch in the rotor. Now again, we'll take our sanding block and again, just place a small bevel on all four sides of the patch on the back edge so we can get it started into the hole and it will tighten as we drive it in. We want to install just a little bit of silicone just around the edge of the hole. Okay, and now we'll install our patch. Put it in place there, and again, a small block and a hammer. Just tap it in. We can take either a knife or a keyhole saw, and cut whatever excess we can reach. Whatever remains sticking up, again, we'll get our sanding block, sand it down even with the rest of the face. Make sure that we're good and flush there. Now that the patch is installed, blow it out with compressed air and apply a face coat. Now we've repaired that little small defect. In starting this procedure, the affected media segment has already been removed. To accomplish this, you would use a reciprocating saw with a long demolition blade to cut the bad material out. Once removed, any residue should be scraped off and cleaned out of the rotor structure. It would be no different, we have it outside of the set frame, but it would be exactly the same in the field uh, where both faces of the rotor would be exposed. Um, need a hammer and a 2x4 block, uh, silicone for glue. And we want to notice which direction the flutes are going and make sure that we align our replacement segment accordingly. First thing, we'll install some RTV to both spokes and the outer band. Okay, now we'll take our larger replacement segment, slide it into place. 
not to sit all the way down. We try to get it fairly close to centered at this point. Okay. Next step will be to install our wedge blocks. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is where the back edge is going to intersect the spoke. We want to take a sanding block, put a slight bevel there. To effectively turn that, that block into a wedge. Place a two by four block over the media face. Tap it into place. But for the purpose of installation now, we'll just lay it down flat. with the larger media segment. You have to make sure that you have access to the other side of the cassette base to install the other wedge block. And again on the back side where we're going to intersect the spoke. Close that bevel. in the place. Just making sure to tap it down evenly. Check and make sure that we're Good and flush on both faces and adjust the media over. Um, I would also recommend probably putting a little small bead of RTV right there just to seal that, that seam off. Now that the segment is installed, blow it out with compressed air and apply a face coat. For additional dehumidification product information, please reference the DH Tech Manual on our website.